Hey friends, today we are hanging out in the Magic Kingdom. Disney just announced a whole bunch of big changes coming up and I wanted to come out and share some of them with you. And then also I've been wanting to hang out in Adventureland. Maybe grab a Dole Whip, watch the Enchanted Tiki Room and just have fun. So I figured we'd come on out, ride some rides, eat some food and have a beautiful Magic Kingdom kind of day. Anywho's, let's go do this. And we have made it to the Magic Kingdom. It is such a beautiful day out today. Temperatures in the 80s and I'm excited to have a little fun. Like I mentioned, Disney announced a bunch of big changes for the future. Like the fact that they're slowly getting away from the reservation system. They're going to be doing no reservations required for date-based tickets. And then also good-to-go days for annual pass holders and cast members. And then on top of that, they announced the return of the Disney Dining Plan and a simplified version for Genie Plus. So this is all big news and good news. All of these things are great for me because I'm not the biggest fan of the reservation system nor am I a fan of the Genie Plus and I've been wanting the Disney dining plan to return for such a long time so this is a good day. And of course if you guys are looking for the full details on all the announcements you guys can head over to the Disney Parks blog they have a really nice breakdown. As for me now I want to make my way to Adventureland. I said I wanted to get a Dole Whip today. I want to do the Enchanted Tiki Room. Maybe Aladdin. Oh maybe we'll actually go up in the treehouse too. Maybe just have a fun Adventureland kind of day. It's funny how some days when you're a local, you can just wake up and you can be like, you know what? I really want to go hang out in Adventureland. You know, like honestly, for some reason, I've been like, wow, I've been craving a Dole Whip and all I've been thinking about is Adventureland. So here we go. I mean, we're going to Adventureland kind of day. In fact, wouldn't it be cool if we do like a food adventure inside Adventureland? Try all of the iconic food here, like the cheeseburger egg rolls and the pot stickers and the Dole Whip, all of the Adventureland snacks. I think that's a good idea. I figured it would be easier if we just get all of the food together and then sample each item. And we're going to start here at the Sunshine Tree Terrace. And we've got ourselves the fried pork and vegetable uh, pot stickers. These were $7.29. They come with a little orange ginger sauce or an orange sesame sauce. There are a lot of good snacks in Adventureland, but nothing compares to Disneyland's Adventureland food. I love all of it over there. They got bagel barbecue. That's like the best thing. And then don't forget about the buns over at the Tropical Hideaway because those were my favorite thing to eat while I'm on vacation over there. And then right outside of Adventureland, they have the spring rolls cart where they have cheeseburger spring rolls and pastrami and pepper jack spring rolls. And I think we'll try one of each of these. For $9.50, you get two. I don't think I've ever had the pastrami spring rolls and I'm not too sure if I'm a big fan of them. I had have, I have had the pepperoni though. Those ones were so good. But now at least we could try a little bit of everything. We got three things to try. Here is a look at our Adventureland sampler. We've got the pot stickers here, the spring rolls here. I don't know which one's the pastrami and which one is the uh, cheeseburger. This one might be the pastrami, but they give you honey mustard and then you got an aioli and then also the orange sauce over here. So lots of dipping sauces and I'm not the biggest fan of these dipping sauces. This one I'm probably excited to try, but uh, yeah, so it was like $9 and $7. So it's around 16 bucks, maybe 17, $17 all together all right let's get to trying some of this food now i think i'm going to start with the pot stickers first because i've had these before but that was like two years ago so they might have changed by then and i don't think i've ever had this sauce before so first let's do the pot stickers on their own just plain jane just like this mm. they are very crispy and i don't taste much flavor inside them but maybe that's what the sauce is for Let's give it a little, let's give it a little saucy, saucy, saucy. The sauce has definitely got to make it a little bit better. I mean, it, they were pretty bland before, just like, that. I like the, the texture of them, but they didn't have much flavor. So here we go, we'll try it with the sauce. Oh, oh, 
an immediate improvement once you dip it into that saucer. That sauce is phenomenal. I love it. So good, very orangey. Like I like the orange taste inside there. Adds much flavor to this and yeah, much better with the sauce. Enough of the dumpling business. Now it's time to get to the spring rolls and I don't know which one I'm trying first so I'm gonna break them open to show you guys. I already know I'm probably not gonna like the pastrami one but it's really cool getting to try new things and be an adventurous eater because I never would get out of my comfort zone and try something that I tend, like normally wouldn't like. So you never know, I mean maybe I will like it but all right, here's the first one and I can tell they're very already crispy. Like I can, they're literally crackling and crisping around as I'm moving around. So let's see which one this one is. This looks like the cheeseburger one. All right, here we go. Cheeseburger egg roll. Cheeseburger egg roll is always a go-to. Very good, and it doesn't taste much like cheese. Like you really don't taste the cheese in there. It's a unique, a very unique flavor, but I love these. They're actually so good. Like I mentioned, I wish they'd bring back the pepperoni one, but look at that in there. Isn't that good? And now it's time to get to the pastrami. Maybe I'm crazy or something, but when I eat the cheeseburger spring roll, I also taste pickles. So maybe they put pickles inside there. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy though. I don't know. All right, here we go. This is the, well, this has got to be the pastrami one. So listen to this though. I know the music might be a little loud, but listen. Look at that. Now this one is pastrami and pepper jack, I think. But you guys, I'm sure you heard that. So here we go. You guys just witnessed that in live action. I really thought I was not gonna like this, but it's not that bad. It's actually quite enjoyable. And I was really going in there with heavy thoughts like, no, nah, it's not gonna be something I like. And mainly it's because of the pepper jack, but this is actually solid. I mean, it's not, as, it's not as good as the cheeseburger or the pepperoni one, but still a very good spring roll. Oh wow, I'm happy. This was actually a good experiment. If you guys have ever had any of the spring rolls from Walt Disney World, let me know which one was your favorite. I mean, I love the pepperoni one. That was my favorite. I hope maybe they bring it back or at least add a new one that I've never had before. But let me know in the comments which snack is your favorite at Adventureland. And enough of the savory items. It's time for the sweet stuff. Maybe head on over and get a Dole Whip or maybe a float. You know, like I said, we're going all out on Adventureland today. Before we get to the Dole Whip, maybe we should stop at the Enchanted Tiki Room. And this camel's really spitting at people here. Look at him up there. You gotta be careful. It's a suspicious camel. Oh, oh, I just saw it. Look at him, watch, he's gonna turn. He's coming at me, I feel like. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry for the lack of videos. I know I haven't been posting as much as I used to, only because I've been traveling around and doing a lot of different things that I've never done before, and it's been incredible. Got to do a lot this year so far, and we're gonna continue doing great trips and going to unique places coming up this summer, and I've been planning some of those. I got a big one planned up in the next coming uh, week or two that I can't wait to share with you guys, but the video should be starting to get back in like my regular fashion how I post them once we settle down in Florida a little bit longer. It looks like we're just in time because the next show starts in six minutes. Six minutes until the next show. Wow That's almost as much fun as New Year's Eve and the orange groves. I glad we did get them out of Canada way. Oh shit, look out there across the water. I like to sit in the far back near the exit door next to these fine gentlemen. Look at that, and plus you get a nice view outside too.
the tiki room was great and it's also a fun place to go to get out of the heat and as soon as you get out of the show you can get a dole whip Aloha Isle Refreshments has a lot more than just Dole Whip here. They have a pineapple upside down cake, the tropical serenade float, and then uh, the classic Dole Whip pineapple float. And I think we should try that cake. All right, this is what I decided on getting. We've got the tropical serenade float, and this is pineapple, orange, and guava juice with coconut soft serve, and then it comes with an upside down pineapple cake pop, which is right there, and then we've got the pineapple upside down cake, and I got it with the pineapple and vanilla swirl, and that actually looks really good too. I just wanted to try them both, and look at this. It, it actually looks amazing. The tropical serenade float is not faring well in this Florida weather, I can tell you that. Like, I haven't had it for this long, but it is a melty, gloopy mess. So we're going to start with this one first. Oh, I had to drink down some of that juice. Oh, that juice is so good. Add a little bit of coconut in there. I like it. And now we got our cake pop here. This is a messy thing. I'm going to dip that in there. Honestly, this is actually amazing. I love the juice and the pineapple upside down cake is phenomenal. Like, I don't know if that's what they got going on there. I know it's a little coconut on the outside, but that is such a great, I don't think, I don't think I've ever had this before. And now I'm obsessed. And also, it's giving time for my upside down cake to soak in all of that swirl there and make it a little bit softer. But this melts very fast. You have to drink it pretty quick, but I like this a lot. It's also awesome because we're trying like three different flavors here because we have the coconut, then we have the pineapple, and then the vanilla. Oh yeah, I like this a lot. But now it's time we dive into the pineapple upside down cake. And you know, this is one of Walt Disney's favorite desserts. Let's see. Oh, a little soft. I want it to melt a little bit so that it can like drip down inside there. This is actually pretty good though. Nice and melty. All right, here we go. Hmm. Okay. A little controversy here, but I have to say, I like this upside down cake pop better than I like the upside down cake. This is very, um, it's very dry. This is actually like the perfect texture it's a perfect little cake pop you know how the filling is on that i mean this is good but can you imagine if it was the size of that that would be phenomenal this is actually still pretty good though like i'm not knocking it i just like this a little bit better overall i, I kind of enjoy them both i'll tell you the one thing the upside down cake has going for it though is the chunks of pineapple like there are whole chunks of pineapple in there and that i like all right, now that the Dole Whip business is taken care of, it's time to move along. And I don't think there's anything else we can eat here because we, we kind of covered it all. Uh, if Tortega Tavern was open, I'd go there. But I do want to make my way over to Fantasyland because I got a lightning lane for Seven Doors Mountain or Seven Doors Mine Train. I don't know why I call it mountain. I decided on buying the individual lightning lane for Seven Doors Mine Train because it was only $11 and I don't ride that that often and I'm excited that they're simplifying Genie Plus because honestly I fully don't understand it. They have changed it so many times I just don't think it works and I'm excited to see what they come up with. You know what I mean? I really love the Fast Pass Plus system. I thought it was fun and I hope that they do something that is a little bit user friendly and everyone actually will enjoy. I know that won't happen but I'm excited for the changes though. I was making my way up to Fantasyland but I noticed that the rocking chairs over in Liberty Square were empty and can't pass up just sitting here for a minute. Just people watching. Look at this. Also listen to the sound of that ice cold refreshment cart. I never see these chairs empty. I walk by them all the time and usually someone's sitting here. So that's why I was like, oh, well, can't pass this opportunity up. Just to rock a little bit. I just wanna rock. I just wanna rock, that's all. I see lots of people walking by. Maybe somebody will come and sit down next to me. I got an, I got an empty rocker over here. Anybody wanna come sit down? 
It's actually not even busy over here at all. Look at it. <laughs> Got the whole area to myself. This is definitely one of the biggest birds I've seen in Disney. Look at this guy. He's gotta be at least three feet tall. Oh, what, you don't think so? Four feet? Four feet, I say then. He's on the hunt though, he's looking for some food. We'll just leave him alone, let him do his own thing. The wait times are not that bad today. It's a small world, it's a 20 minute wait. Peter Pan doesn't look like it's a long wait either. Cause this is the standby queue, so it must be all indoors. Yeah, wow, I wonder what the actual wait time is. If, if Peter Pan is low enough, I actually might ride this right now. Never mind, it was 75 minutes. Looks can be deceiving when it comes to Peter Pan. But uh, we have our lightning lane for seven doors, so we're just gonna keep making our way towards that direction. It looks like the standby wait time is 95 minutes for seven doors mine train. And this is the lightning lane coming all the way out here. I wish I can get a refund. Hey, how are ya? <laughs> good, good. I'm sure it's gonna be faster than 95 minutes, but if I knew it was gonna be like a 30 minute wait, I probably wouldn't have paid $11 to ride it. Oh, my Lanta. I got the last, I got the back row. Woo -hoo -hoo. We got the back row, oh. so beautiful out right now. <laughs> this was the best time to ride this ride. Look at that, amazing. Oh, I wonder if we're gonna see the witch. Gonna keep rocking. that ride was just a little bit longer and my favorite part is probably inside the mine like inside the mining where like the seven doors are it's probably my favorite part of the ride not like the roller coaster itself I just like seeing all the animatronics and I'm happy that I got to ride it today I'm happy you know I made my way over to Tomorrowland and I really wanted to ride the Astral Orbiter. That's one of my favorite rides to ride during a sunset, but the line is actually very busy, so maybe a lot of people want to ride it during the sunset. Look at it up there. It's so beautiful once you get up top. So instead, maybe we'll go to the uh, Carousel of Progress. Haven't done that in a while and I wouldn't mind checking in on the family, you know? I feel like it's been a while since I've done the Carousel of Progress, and I love this ride. It's been around since the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. I wish I was there. I wish I was alive for that. I mean, honestly, I see pictures and I see videos, and uh, I watch the movie Tomorrowland, and nothing really gives me the just of it. I just wish I was there. It, it had to be incredible. Look at the Sherman Brothers up there. Just a dream away. And they also got rid of the turnstiles there. Look at that. Captures the spirit of the General Electric Pavilion at the New York World Fair. Thanks, boys. Say goodbye to Well, 
A beautiful tomorrow just a dream away. That says we're going places. There's progress ahead. And that's just the mood we want for the whole parade. Looks like we're getting a pretty empty theater too. Not too many people are coming to ride the Carousel Progress. They're probably lining up to uh, watch Happily Ever After. I wish I could paint my walls this color. Like have, e like have different bedrooms, different sides of the actual Carousel Progress Theater. That's gotta be really cool looking. One of these days. I had the honor of performing in that original show. I think they actually added rocking chairs to this now. Look at that. The Carousel of Progress was Walt's own idea from beginning to end. He loved it. He introduced the show at the World's Fair in New York City in 1964, and it was an immediate smash hit. Millions of people came to see it. And since then, the Carousel of Progress has had more performances than any other stage show in the history of American theater. You know, Walt loved the idea of progress, and he loved the American family. And he himself was probably as American as anyone could possibly be. He thought it would be fun to watch the American family go through the 20th century, experiencing all the new wonders as they came. And he put them together in a show called Carousel of Progress, which we are now about to see. Although our Carousel family has experienced a few changes over the years, our show still revolves around the same theme, and that's progress. Travel by train from New York to California in less than seven days. And I even hear tell about two brothers from North Carolina who are working on some kind of flying contraption. <laughs> It'll never work. She's the star of the New World's Fair in St. Louis, and, <clears throat> and you put that away before your mother finds it. Oh, Dad. You heard me. Well, we have one of those new talking. End of every day, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Phew, boy, hottest 4th of July we've had in years. We've come a long way, though, since the turn of the century, over 20-some-odd years ago. You know that pilot fella, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single-wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. And sports stadiums are springing up all over. And boy, nobody hits that old horse hide like that new fella, Babe Ruth. Jazz music is the cat's meow. And there's been ads in the paper for months for a movie starring Al Jolson. And he's going to talk and sing. Oh, boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> there goes Schwartz in his Upmobile. He sure loves that horn. You know, in my new Essex, I've got an electric starter. Now I don't have to crank. We can travel from New York to Los Angeles by train in only three days. And we've got a house full of new electrical servants. Mr. Edison sure added life to our home. Whoa there, you'll blow a fuse. It is better than ever now. And we've got some amazing new wonders around the house to prove it. For instance, our refrigerator holds more food and ice cubes. And thanks to our automatic dishwasher, oh, I don't have to dry the dishes anymore after supper. Gives Rover and me more time to enjoy our evening stroll together. <laughs> Later, boy. Oh, and here's something else that's new. I just heard a new turn today on the radio. Fella says, we've got something now called the rat race. Did you ever hear that one? It sure describes my life. I'm involved in something now called commuting. I drive into the city for work all day and then turn right around and drive all the way back. And the highway is crowded with fellow rats doing the same thing. That's what they call progress, dear. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's right. Isn't it a pleasant holiday? Oh, turkey's in the oven, it's peaceful and quiet. Yes! 300 points, my best score yet. Well, it was peaceful until Santa brought that new virtual reality space pilot game. Your turn, Grandma. Let's switch the image over to the TV so the resident flying ace can show you how it works. Now, it's a little tricky. Just use your game glove to fly behind the other guy and blast him with your laser blaster. Wait. You know it, my day. Oh, no. You're not going to tell us about the old days when you didn't even have a car phone. Hey, Trish, for a while we didn't even have a house phone. Not to mention laser discs, high-def TVs, 
Everything is automated today, including. Sorry, Orville. Anyway, you guys don't know how good you got it nowadays. You know, my grandpa told me to bear. Who cares if I burned our Christmas turkey? I do. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. Someday, everything's going to be so automated, you won't ever have to cook another Christmas turkey again. <laughs> Say it's a great big, beautiful tomorrow, shining at the end of every day. That was a good time sitting down, watching the carousel progress. And now it's time to start making our way out. Head home. Uh, I think Happily Ever After is going to start in like maybe like 10 minutes, so we want to probably get out of here before the actual firework crowd actually comes. I, did I just look at my, <laughs> I just looked at my magic band as a watch. Like, oh, about 10 minutes about, give or take, you know? But this is the time you want to come. Look at people movers a walk on. Looks like it's about a five minute wait for Astro Orbiter. Look at that. Oh, I'm almost tempted, but We've been here a while. We gotta get home. We gotta see Gracie Grell. But look, you can just walk right on. And with that, I think we are done here today. I would call this a successful day at Magic Kingdom. I had a lot of fun, got to try lots of food, and now it's time to head home to see Gracie Grell. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, happily ever after. Should I stay? Or should I go? Hello, I'm looking for a dog named Gracie. If there is a Dalmatian named Gracie, please come downstairs. There she is! There you are! Oh, let me see that smile! Oh, yeah! Woohoo!